When you do ministry alone, you can go a lot faster and you can control the outcome to be exactly what you want it to be. But the problem with doing ministry alone is you're alone and you have no one to share the burden and the responsibility that you feel. So how can you do ministry better? I want to talk to you about the power of partnership. Hi, my name is Matt. I'm a pastor in church ministry, serving over 30 years. And I've started this YouTube channel, Pastor to Pastor, to encourage ministry leaders, whether you're on staff or you're a volunteer, to encourage you and to develop your skills. So please subscribe to my channel, like it, share this with someone that you might find would love this content today. Because I'm talking about how we do ministry how we do it is so important because I've worked so many years working hard in ministry. I move fast with intensity and I love it. I love doing ministry and I love growing in my skill and expertise. But the problem with doing ministry on my own is I'm alone and I get overwhelmed and I feel like I'm not good at everything. And I feel the responsibility gets very weighty and what I've learned is to not just work harder, but to work smarter. I love work ethic. I, I think we do have to work hard, but I'm actually realizing that it's the power of partnership that gets me the best results, but keeps me healthy and steady. I want to read a scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 from the wisest man we know in the, in the world. Uh, King Solomon was given godly wisdom. And I think Ecclesiastes chapter 4 should become a life verse for us who have a calling to impact in kingdom ministry. Whether you're a leader or pastor or you're a volunteer group leader, this is for us today. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, starting on verse 9, says... Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Man, that's good, isn't it? It, it reminds me, I've shared that so many times in wedding ceremonies where I'm talking about, and I think this scripture certainly is talking about biblical marriage between a man and a woman, a covenant relationship. It's beautiful. It's sacred that two, a husband and wife can partner together and two are better than one. And then I love three strands cannot easily break, will not break. And I think that's a picture of a husband and wife drawing to Jesus Christ, inviting the Lordship of Jesus through his Holy Spirit. And when you have a marriage like that, as my wife Kelly and I have had for 30 years this year, it's a strong, healthy and productive marriage. But I think this goes on past just marriage. I think it's a principle of the power of partnership, which I've had to learn in my life. I, this week, I was uh, working on a big objective for our whole church. And while I have years of expertise and I understand, I was just feeling lack of confidence or not having yet clarity. There's a lot of options and considerations. And so... I called a friend who's a pastor on staff who has nothing to do with my area. His name is Jake, I've known him for years. And I said, Jake, I know you're busy. Do you have 20, 30 minutes to spare just to process this with me? And so when he was free, he gave me, we got on video and I just shared what we're doing, why we're doing it, where we're going and what I think. But without me being too persuasive, I just said, this is what I think, but I'm not sure. And there's, there's the tensions. What do you see? And Jake was able to, and Jake, number one, I trust him. He's a friend. We've done ministry together, but also the way he's wired, he, he sees more. He has, uh, he's, he's very meticulous. He, he, 
he just has great insight and he thinks different than I do. And so he started to poke at and ask questions and have options and considerations. And he listened to me. He's a great listener, he gave wise counsel and affirm some things I'm talking about, and we just processed. And as we talked, here's the power of partnership. As we talked back and forth and listened, and I'm writing notes, I got more confident and clear about where I should go. I was 80% there, but Jake's time of partnering with me got me from 80% to 100%. And that's the power of partnership, that two are better than one. In fact, I love the math of this, of the three strands. I think one plus one equals three. <laughs> now, I'm not known to be a mathematician. I'm known as musician. And I know one plus one doesn't equal three, but I think that there is a, an addition plus to partnership. There's a one plus one equals two plus more. When you have two people come together, especially when they're diverse and there's trust and there's shared mission, diverse thought, one plus one is actually synergistic. It, you create more, you, you build more, you see more, more comes out of partnership. So what I've learned is when I am dealing with a process or a strategy or a responsibility or, um, I'm having to solve a problem. Ministry is about solving problems, meeting needs. When you're doing that, take time many times to find a man or a woman or sometimes two or three, not, not a large group, but one or two and say, here's what I'm seeing. Here's what it is. Here are the challenges. Here are the gaps. Don't, don't persuade them. Don't sell them on it. Don't be obstinate. Be open. Be willing to let them critique and question and poke at. And it means you've got to go slower, but if you go slower in partnership, you're going to learn more, see more, and create something that's much better than you could ever do on your own. Practically speaking, when I've raised up volunteer leaders in a church to own a specific ministry, a group that's going to go from 10 to 30 people, I have that, or a traffic team, or uh, people who, who deal with the finances, contributions, or I could go on and on. Children's ministry. I realized don't just raise up a leader, raise up a team of leaders that partner together. And I raise up a team of leaders. Listen to this. This is important. That they're very diverse in their thinking and skill sets. Now, that may sound strategic. It is messy and painful. Because when you partner two opposing people, think about a marriage again, a man and a woman, <laughs> a spender, a saver, an extrovert, an introvert, whatever it is, it's difficult to bring people to lead and partner together that are very diverse in thinking. But I would, I would do that realizing that this person's more people focused, but this person's more process focused, which means a process person is kind of frustrating and irritating people and not great at recruiting team, man, the process and the scheduling is amazing. And this person, which like this was like me, is very people oriented. They feel and sense warmth and relationship and buy-in and they recruit and they want to talk spiritual, but they can't get anything done. <laughs> the process is weak and the follow through is troubling. So when you are getting leaders under you, you have to really manage the messiness of partnership. It's like, it's like the pistons in an engine that they're, they're moving and going fast which means that there's friction, oof. And the only thing that keeps those pistons, I remember driving one of our cars and the oil was not going through it. The oil regulator was out. We were driving on the highway, my wife and I, and some ministry couple, and the engine stopped and cracked. We had to have the car towed and then we had to sell it because the oil wasn't in there. So the friction was so painful, it cracked the engine. So the only way you can have Friction happening with diverse leaders and partnership is oil, the Holy Spirit, relationship. And I would say coffee. <laughs> the Holy Spirit and coffee will help a lot. But here's the point is when there is friction with you and your, your leaders, meaning disagreement, hurt feelings, aggravation, pestering, all those things, 
friction is a good thing. It means we're moving. The car is moving. We're moving forward. And it takes friction to move things forward. And it takes partnership of gifted, opinionated, strong, and diverse people that will wear you out. So you need the Holy Spirit, the oil of joy, the oil, the fruit of the Spirit, always in that. But the partnership is worth it because the partnership is powerful. I think about Elijah, one of the greatest leaders in the Bible, this courageous man of God standing against evil in Israel and even against the other uh, nations. And he's the prophet who speaks of God. But even this powerful man of faith, gifted person, Elijah, gets alone and overwhelmed. He gets depressed. Oh, God, take me. He's under the tree. Lord, kill me. You know. And God had to remind him, I have a remnant of people. But it wasn't just there's other godly people. He said, I'm going to give you a partner, Elisha. And I know Elijah mentors Elisha to take over, but it's not just mentoring, it's partnership. And you know, I've been able to mentor or develop many leaders with me and under me. I get a lot of credit for that. I really wasn't thinking about mentoring or developing. What I was wanting was partnership. Come with me. Do this with me. Let's be equally yoked on mission and capacity and commitment, different skills, different mindsets. And so if you'll just think about partnering with great people, even that are diverse from you or they aren't where you're at yet, you won't just partner with your ministry. You'll multiply your ministry. There is so many principles to the power of partnership that could go on and on. What I'm saying is the next time you have a process, a strategy, a tension or problem, don't do it alone. Slow down, observe around you who are men and women that I respect, that have maturity and expertise and diversity of thought. Find a time to bring them around with you with a whiteboard, in your office, on a video, go to them to their office or home and ask, what do you see that I don't see? Come with me and let's partner together to do the work of the ministry. Hope this inspires you today. Leave a comment below of who is your partner in ministry and how are they diverse from you? I wanna see that friction of ministry I talked about. Subscribe to my channel and like it, share it. Um, I'm seeing my subscription grow. I love it. I have some prayer goals of some numbers I want to see as I grow this channel. So help me grow this channel. Thanks so much. God bless.